What's been touted as Indian banks' final push for NPA recognition will continue to hurt profitability for a few quarters to come. That's according to Moody, Moody's Investor Services. The rating agency, however, believes that cleaner balance sheet in the long run to be credit positive for the sector. To understand uh, Moody's views on the banking sector in greater detail, let's welcome in Alka Anbaras, Vice President of Institutional Financial Institutions Group at Moody's Investor Services. Uh, Alka, thank you so much for joining in. Uh, let me begin this conversation by asking you, you know, what's the basis of your confidence? Are you saying that this, this is a, the, the hurt in profitability is short term in nature and the cleanup will yield benef benefits in the long term? Sure. So uh, some of the messages that we are seeing is that NPL recognition uh, is coming to an end. So this uh, February circular from RBI will push up NPL recognition over the next uh, next few quarters. But this would mean that provisioning costs will remain high for the banking system and asset credit costs will remain high in the next next year or so. But, but to your question, what gives us con confidence that we are coming to an end is, uh, is some of the analysis that we have done and we have looked into the, the potential stressed asset and, and we think that these are not new problems of the banking system. These are problems that, are, that were well known uh, from the same legacy book of assets originated between 2009 to 12, which has caused the bulk of the asset quality challenges for the system, relate to the similar stress sectors, whether it's infrastructure, power, steel, and assets, these are not new problems. And to a large extent, we were always taking those into account in our stressed assets ratio. So the problem is not new, but, but this would mean that profitability for the banking system will remain under pressure in the next year. Okay, uh, I, let me just push this point a little further. If you, I agree, the problem is not new. If sectors like infrastructure, power are, are well-known uh, problem areas. Uh, but do you see, whatever you're seeing with the NCLT process, the, the IBC process, is it reaching a logical conclusion where assets are getting sold off uh, for you to feel positive that this is going to meet its deadline? Sure. So, so indeed, on the NCLT process, uh, there was a positive momentum when we heard about those uh, those steel assets and uh, at least the initial um, news that we are also hearing is that the loss given default or the haircuts the banks need to take are much lower than what they have been providing for those assets. So perhaps on the steel front, there, there is there is some some uh, positive news, but obviously the legal processes are are still you know, unknown and this whole NCLT process is something new. So we need to see if those resolutions finally see the conclusion and then we move on from those assets. So that, that, that's one part of the problem where steel has been a positive um, surprise or pos at least, a, at least some, some amount of good news. But, but now the bulk of the challenges is relating to the other infrastructure segments. So whether it's construction, power, where actually we don't know how the haircuts uh, will turn out to be. And the expectation is that the haircuts could be worse than where we see the steel uh, resolutions come out. And that could, that could cause uh, some issues for the banking system. Uh, a specific point that you make about uh, government-owned banks, you said increased provisioning will obviously hurt uh, government-owned banks. That, that's likely to get offset by the planned capital infusion by the government. Uh, but, you know, hasn't there always been a yawning gap between the capital that is required and what the government has allotted so far? And again, the second piece to this problem is that quarter after quarter, you're actually seeing, uh, you know, the, the declared assets was the real ones, what has now be popularly become called divergence, only increasing. So, so uh, one, uh, we think the quantum of capital infusion that the government announced last year was quite comprehensive. And the government made commitments that all banks will achieve the minimum Basel III uh, norms. And, and this is after assuming that the banking system will provide for the NPS, perhaps not, uh, uh, will reach at least a provision cover of 50, 55% or so in the, in the next year. So, so from that perspective, uh, the, the next part that is yet to come uh, should broadly address the issues, at least of the weakest uh, public sector banks. But clearly the part is, 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 is well defined, what, what capital the government will infuse, and, and clearly the asset quality challenges uh, are, are still continuing. Uh, but, but this could have uh, one implication, at least we think that uh, while the government is very much committed that all banks would meet the, the minimum Basel III norms, which is 8% CET1 ratio by March 2019. But in this process of doing so, perhaps some of the stronger banks could lose out. So some of the stronger banks 
uh, could get less capital from the government, which was already evidence in the capital infusion the government did in January. And some of the stronger banks would need to go out and raise capital by themselves, whereas the weaker banks that don't have access to the capital markets would, would get uh, support from the government. Would you continue to view private sector banks a little more favorably, as the street has always but you know, had this distinction between public and private sector banks? Uh, would you consider to view them favorably? Uh, so, so among the private sector banks, uh, I think it's, it's obviously well known that ICICI and Access Bank have bulk of this asset quality challenges. They are the big corporate lenders uh, as well. And, and we don't think that their asset quality profile is, is going to be significantly different than the public sector banks. But their ability to absorb this impact is much higher because their operating profits are better. So as such, their ability to absorb credit costs is, is much better. Their provision coverage, coverage ratios are already somewhat better than most of the public sector banks. And, be, and then their capitalization profile is already better. So from that perspective, indeed, the private sector banks have better wherewithal to, to go through this, uh, this uh, initial issue. But, but clearly, the ultimate impact will depend on how these resolutions take place, what kind of haircuts banks need to take on, their, on, on the assets, and, and where do we end up with the balance sheets, perhaps in the next 12 to 18 months or so. Alka, we leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us with your views. Alka Anbarasu from Moody's Investor Services talking about uh, the NPA issue in the banking sector and how this might be this might be the beginning of a you know a cleaning process might end up beneficial to the banking sector in the long run.